In this tutorial we will continue creating the FlexPendant application for the Evolix lift kit. We will learn how to add text input elements and modify the values of digital outputs and rapid variables. We will continue working on the web application we created in the previous video so if you don't have it, visit the first tutorial. We start by opening the application with Visual Studio Code. Remember that to do this we must go to the Controller tab. Copy the address of the web application folder. And finally open the folder in the editor. The first change we are going to make is to add the stop and move to buttons, for that copy and modify the same structures that we used for the two buttons in the previous tutorial. The next step is to create the text input items, for this we first initialize the three corresponding variables, we put in the function create main content the call to the new functions of the text input fields. Next, copy the following structure. Remember that you can find the complete version of this application linked to this video where you can copy the parts that interest you. The variable input move to is joined with a new element of type input, an HTML identifier is assigned to it, with the following line we make that a zero is shown when starting the application. The following sentence is to filter the text that can be introduced, in this case only positive numbers. Finally, with the function onChange and the parameter text we define that the amount introduced by the user is shown by console. Next, we create two other identical structures by modifying their variables and their HTML identifiers. Next, we are going to use a very useful statement with which you will be able to set and reset digital outputs of the controller. Go to the create up button function and add the following line. This statement will set the Omnicore's change output to 1. Let's explain how it works. The await is used to pause the execution of the function while waiting for a confirmation that the value in the controller has been changed. RWS refers to a function included in the Robot Web Services library. IO library will affect the inputs and outputs of the controller, with the function identifier set signal value. We indicate the action that we want to perform, inside the parenthesis we define the output on which we want to act, and finally the value to which we want to set it. We put a similar sentence in create down button but setting the output to zero. Next, we go to the create move to input function and add the following statement. In this case we define that we want to act on a variable that is in the rapid code. Note that to act on this variable the function is set data value not set signal value as in the previous case. Inside the parenthesis we define the path of the variable. In this case the variable is in the task t underscore rob1 in the wizard module, and is called move to. The next thing we put is the value to be written, in this case the text entered by the user, but in float format. As you can see this is a persistent type variable and is defined in rapid. We put a similar sentence in create low limit input and create up limit input but specifying the variables on which we want to act. Finally, let's update the HTML file to display the new items we have created. First we add the library for the text input elements and the RWS libraries, then the stop button and on another line the button and the text input move to. In another table the current position element. Finally, we save everything. We go to the flex pendant and open our application. You can see that the elements that we have created are shown on screen. If we use the I.O. simulator we can see that when we press up the change output is set to 1 and when we press down it is set to 0. If we change the move to text input element for example to 20 and go to the FlexPendant program data, the data is updated correctly. And if we change it to 50 it is also updated correctly.